Hey guys, welcome to me, Edgar's very first Pinterest batching party. I am Megan, if we've never met before, and I am the onboarding education specialist here at me, Edgar. And we're really excited to talk to you a little bit about Pinterest and how you can take advantage of me, Edgar's scheduling for Pinterest to make sure you have a systemized approach that's not just something that you're doing when you have time, but you feel like it's fitting into your overall marketing strategy. So I'm excited to show you around the tool, talk a little bit about Pinterest and get your questions answered. I'd love to also know you're here, who is here, uh, where you're tuning in from and what industry you're in so that we can connect a little further. Doing webinars is really cool because we typically have people from all over from different industries coming in here and learning about how to get their mission across. Um, Sarah, welcome. Thank you for finding the chat. Uh, yeah, guys, go ahead and introduce yourself um, to Sarah's today. Sarah from Columbus, welcome. You'll notice Maura just popped into the chat there as well. She is our social media and content manager here at Me Edgar. So she is a wealth of knowledge just about social media content in general too. So keep your questions coming during this batching party to her. She'll go ahead and give you her advice if I miss anything. Know that I'll stay on to answer any questions at the end as well, but go ahead and ask more questions too. Linda, welcome. Um, Rebecca from Colorado. I'm actually in Denver, Rebecca, so we are nice and close. Super exciting there. Tim from Michigan, welcome, welcome. Lisa from North Carolina, hello, nice to meet you. I went to college in North Carolina actually, so I love that state quite a bit. Um, cool. So to start out today, I'm going to give you a tour first around Meet Edgar's Pinterest features. We did just release these a couple weeks ago and we're very excited about how they work. So I'm excited to tune in and show you that. So I'll start out with that and then we'll start talking a little bit about just batching strategies. We do have a really a couple of really cool resources for you. First, if you haven't downloaded our Pinterest batching um, workbooks here yet. That link right there, that drive link I just put into the chat, that'll bring you to our batching success, or excuse me, our Pinterest success bundle. Um, it is a great resource, especially if you're just getting started on Pinterest, just to understand some of the things you should be thinking about. Since Pinterest is a visual search engine, it does have a little bit of a different nature than things like Twitter and Facebook, which we'll talk about, but that will go ahead and give you a little bit of a better idea just on how to get started planning. Um, second is if you've never been to our batching parties before and you're unfamiliar with the concept of batching, the second drive link that I'm going to put into the chat right here is just a little bit about the concept of batching and lays out some math that makes it really easy for you to go ahead and understand regarding how much content you should be creating when so that you don't feel like, again, you're having to create social media content all of the time. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let you guys uh, take a peek around me, Edgar. I'm going to share my screen. Um, Becky, if you're having trouble connecting, go ahead and refresh your browser. I would say that would do the trick. Um, it looks like we're streaming live here. So if you do have any sound or video issues, try refreshing your browser and clicking back in um, and this room will come. Otherwise, we will send out a replay afterwards. I hope you can get on live, Becky, but if not, know that there will be a replay sent out afterwards. Cool. Keep your questions coming in the chat there. I'll pop, pop back and forth and take a peek at them. Maura will also be there um, and let me know if you do have any questions. I should be sharing my screen here. I will say if the screen drops at all during this, I super apologize. Sometimes it likes to do that. I will be back in 10 seconds if it does. Um, so sit tight. But we'll go ahead and get started showing you around how to use Meet Edgar and Pinterest. So within Meet Edgar, super simple to connect to your Pinterest account. Just come to your accounts tab here, click on add Pinterest. You'll be directed to Pinterest. If you're logged into Pinterest already, you'll just go ahead and authorize Edgar to have permission to post there. If not, you'll put your username and password in and you'll know it's hooked up properly because you'll see the little Pinterest account right over here. So adding your content to me, Edgar, for Pinterest works really well because our tool is based on a category-based system of posting. If you're familiar with me, Edgar, you know these categories are the way that you add content to the library to stay really organized. Categories are also amazing for batching. They're so amazing for batching because it really allows you to get on in there and do the math to understand how many status updates per category per month you need to create. So if you have, let's say, um, 
your inspirational content here and you know that you need to create 20 posts for your inspirational content um, category each month, you can either put a whole day as your batching day. Let's say like the first Monday of the month, you can come in and start creating all of your content for each category on that Monday. Or perhaps you're someone who wants to do just the 20 inspirational posts on Monday, 20 um, blog content posts on Tuesday, whatever works for you. But these categories make it so you're not feeling like you have to create 100 posts a month for each cat uh, for your social media, but you can break it down into each category. So that's one of the benefits of how categories fit into batching. With Pinterest specifically, it makes it so easy to make sure that your boards are actually kind of associated with each category. So you're distributing your content onto each board in Pinterest. Now boards in Pinterest, again, can be things like your blog posts, your curated content, tips, stuff like that works really well for the boards. Other boards you can think about doing are like a best of board so that you're always giving people all of your the best content you have out there, um, a little behind the scenes content board, stuff like that. So I would really suggest thinking about the way that you can go in there and set your categories to be your boards for Pinterest if you want, or you can use existing categories and just add your content in for Pinterest. So when you click to add new content in Edgar, you always select where the content goes. I'm going to select Pinterest right here. You'll notice when you select Pinterest, you have one more step that's a little different than the others, and that is to select a board. So let's say I want to send this to my blog post board here. Again, I can either go ahead and put this in my existing blog post category, or if you're on the full Edgar plan, you have unlimited categories. So you can create a specific blog post pins um, category here if you wanted to use different language or different um, scheduling times for Pinterest specifically. You're then gonna put your blog content and what you'd like to write as the description part here. The cool part is if you do put a URL into this section here, I'm just gonna grab a blog post to show you as an example. If you put a URL in here, you'll notice it's automatically copied down into this lower section. So this lower section right here, you'll notice says destination link. So this is where the pin is sending. Now remember, Pinterest is a search engine, which means that it actually has a vested interest in taking people off of the platform. So if you've searched something on Pinterest and you found it and you click on that um, pin, you're directed to the actual site where the destination link is. And Pinterest actually loves for people to leave Pinterest and consume the content on other people's site because they're search engine, they see that as a job well done. This is awesome for driving traffic to your site because we know that on Facebook, it's typically something that they kind of frown upon if you're continuously sending people off of Facebook to your site with every single post you're putting out there because they want to keep people within the Facebook app application. Pinterest is a little bit different. So this is something you want to really take advantage of when you're creating content is remembering Pinterest's algorithm and within their smart feed, love, love, loves to send people from Pinterest to your site to drive traffic. So the destination link here always has to be filled out. Once it's copied down here, if this is something that's like going just to Pinterest, you can absolutely remove this link from this text box. And then this is just the description part. For the description, remember you always wanna think about building up that curiosity. So telling people things like, hey, go ahead and click on this blog post to learn X, Y, Z. Go ahead and do, um, go ahead and find out um, why I love tip number five in this blog post. Peak people's curiosity and set their expectation about the content they're going to consume once they click off of Pinterest and get to your site. That expectation match is huge for building trust. Remember, you always wanna make sure that people trust the content that they consume when they're on your site so they want to click on future pins. Once you have the destination link down here and you've written your description, you'll notice you also have a pin title right here. So if you have a URL here to a blog and you don't fill out the pin title, this is not a required field, what happens is Pinterest will automatically create the pin title based on what is called the OG title tag on your blog. So it'll automatically be filled out, but if you wanted to override that, or if you wanted to test different titles to see what's grabbing the interest and piquing the curiosity and getting your click-through rate up the most, you can absolutely fill out this pin title with something of your choice.
So once you have all of this filled out, the last thing you need to do, of course, is add a graphic. So there is a few different things you can do to add graphics to your pins. First, if you have the URL in here, you'll notice we have suggested media. These are, um, these are photos that are being scraped from whatever URL is in here. You can just click to add it and you'll notice that adds is a static image here. So these are all being pulled from whatever images you have in your blog post or your landing page you're sending people to, and it's an incredibly fast way to get a graphic added. Now remember, Meet Edgar actually does not resize images, so if these images are not sized to your liking on Pinterest, they will show as like those smaller squares sometimes, so just be aware of that. One of the other things that I really recommend doing is find uh, creating your own images in a program like Canva or whatever photo and graphic design tool you use. And you can upload these directly from your computer here. Now, the cool thing about doing this is you can start to do things like get text overlay on your posts and stuff, which we'll look at when I go ahead and pop into our Canva account and show you some examples. But just know if you create your pins or you have images elsewhere, you can click on this little mountain icon here, select an image from your computer and go ahead and upload it to the post. So once you're happy with how that post and pin looks, you save it to your library. The library in Edgar, just a catalog of everything that you've added there. Everything you add to the library will always remain in the library. Scheduling your pins on this weekly repeating schedule works the same way as it does for your other accounts as well. Again, you can notice on this weekly repeating schedule that you do this by a category based system. So I can go ahead and click into this area check off that I'd like a pin to send out at 5 a.m. from my blog post pin category, click on save, and that's now a time slot. These work in the exact same way they do for your other social media accounts in a last in first out rotation. So that means when Ecker is going along here and he's hitting this category, the most recent blog post that I added as a pin in my library to this category will be the first one that sends out to Pinterest when Edgar hits this category. So last in, first out. He'll then take that whole pin and put it to the end of the line in the category and move along. The next time he hits this category, he'll send the next update out, put it to the end of the line in the category and move along. He's going to work his way through all of the pins within that category. Once he reaches the bottom and there are no new pins within that category, that's when I'll start from the top again, repinning your older pins. We'll go over a couple of the things you have to think about when you're doing this, but just know the evergreen content that you're putting on this schedule works incredible for Pinterest because like I mentioned before, it is a search engine that you always wanna be thinking about the things you're pinning there, making sense to your followers on Pinterest or to people searching within your industry and niche on Pinterest. Months and years down the road, they'll automatically or they'll already be able to consume that content and find value from it. All right, so how you know what pins are going out where are going to be in this Q tab. So the Q within me, Edgar, is going to be your um, view of everything that's going out. You can always sort with these filters over here to show you like just the pins that are going out and stuff like that. That'll go ahead and sort the Q so you can go ahead and see what you do have going out. All right, so a couple of special things with Pinterest, especially when you're adding content. Pinterest does have a rule that you cannot send the exact same pin more than five times within a month. So for this reason, if you do have a pin that's gone out within a month period, more than five times, we are going to expire in the library. So we have everything set up within me, Edgar, to do this for you. So you don't have to worry about that. We're not gonna get you in trouble with Pinterest in that way. But if you have like a blog post or a thought leadership tip or something that you'd like to share on Pinterest more than once, there's a lot of different philosophies behind how much you should be pinning and on what boards you should be pinning. But just know that Pinterest actually sees a new pin as a new graphic or a new image or a new video. They don't prohibit you from sharing the same link more than five times, but if the link and photo is exactly the same, that's gonna be the same pin. 
So when you're creating your posts here, we suggest actually adding a few different versions with our variation tool to make sure if things in your rotation are going out more than once a month, you have a different graphic, which Pinterest sees as fresh content. And you know, on any social media network, fresh content is always preferred by the algorithm. So how this works is again, you're always going to go ahead and categorize it, check off your account permissions, select the board you like to put this on, go ahead and write your pin, get your destination link in here. Um, if you'd like to test titles, this variation feature is awesome for testing different titles as well. So if I wanted to, let's say, add this graphic from my suggested images there, you'll notice when I scroll down, that I have these other options that say add variations. So if I click to add a variation, I get a brand new text box popping up. So this is a second version of this post that I can then go in and create a different graphic for to upload here as a different graphic using the same destination link. You'll notice in this second variation, the destination link is already automatically copied there. This is a great time for you to test things like pin titles. Within me, Edgar, our main philosophy when it comes to writing headlines and titles is that you want to do something called a headline generating machine for any piece of content that you put out there. Because when it comes down to it, the very best piece of con or the very best title you create for like a blog post isn't gonna be the first one. So Maura actually, who's in the chat here, writes all of our blog content and she comes up with 10 to 20 headlines for each blog post that she puts out. Some might say that seems like a waste. You're only titling it one time. Well, it allows for you to do two things. One, it allows for you to get the very best headline because again, if we take the time to brainstorm and we get these details, we're going to get a better result than the first thing that pops into our head, right? Second, it allows her to use any additional headlines that she decided to create as a really strong kind of runner up headline. She could use those as different pin titles here to start testing and getting a little more data. I'm so sorry about that. Um, cool. So what I was saying was whenever um, you're creating different graphics, you want to go ahead and create them all at the same time, right? 
So within Canva, the way you do that is you think about that blog post and how you can create five different graphics for it. I suggest doing this with any piece of content you're adding to Pinterest, always creating five different graphics to add into me, Edgar. I'm gonna try sharing my screen again here with only one window open, since that seems to be what this program likes, cool. So when we're within Canva here, this is our Canva account, and I'm gonna show you some things that we do. So you'll notice here, that we've got a couple of different pins as an example right up here. This first one says how to build your Pinterest content strategy. When I click into this, you can go ahead and see this is a great graphic. We have a blog post called how to build your Pinterest content strategy. And this is gonna be the image that we created. It's so simple in Canva to do this because when you create an image, it already um, has the dimensions that are perfect for Pinterest. You know, the long view that's gonna show up in people's feed that way. So this is one option that we have for creating your Pinterest content for this blog post. But what Maura actually did, rather than having to create this in the future, is she batched making all of these graphics at the same time. And you can see this is the exact same title of that blog post here, but it's a different graphic. So how to get more. Thank you. I'm going to try one more time sharing in Canva. If that doesn't work, I'll just talk it through to you. <laughs> Sorry about that trouble. Um, cool. So when you are within Canva here, as I was mentioning, um, we have these two posts. One is to how to build Pinterest content strategy. This one is how to get more traffic from Pinterest to your blog. These could be for the same blog post here, but because they're different images, when I go into Meet Edgar and actually upload these to my content, those two different images with the same destination link URL is going to have Pinterest see these as different pins, fresh content. So whenever you're adding your blog content or whenever you're adding any content into um, Meet Edgar with that variations feature, 100% come on in here and make these different graphics. Within Canva, it's so simple to do. When you come to Canva and you click on create a design, you'll notice that you can just say, I want to create a Pinterest pin. And it's going to take you to the proper dimensions of the Pinterest pin right here. So all you have to do is go ahead and upload a photo, upload your title and create it. And it's already automatically done for you. So for this, especially if you're using like pin, um, Canva stock images, I could go to photos here. Let's say I could just type in social media. It will go ahead and pop up an images that I could use. So this one, let's say that looks great. I could go ahead and customize um, this as like my background. I could go ahead and add a um, text here for Pinterest. So I could go ahead and get my text blog about Pinterest. Um, go ahead and do that title. Obviously, you're going to go ahead and make this much more interesting than I'm making it here. Um, go ahead and have my title here and then put my little perhaps me Edgar logo um, or whatever I'd like to go ahead and add there to brand it a little more. And this could be a graphic that I'm sending to Pinterest. I'm going to go ahead and download it from Canva with this little download button. I'm going to stop sharing in Canva and we're just going to share in me, Edgar, now. Um, but you get the point. Once you go ahead and you download the graphics from Canva, um, you're going to come back into me, Edgar. So I downloaded my graphic that I made in Canva and I'm going to come back into me, Edgar, here. Click to log in. Click to add my content. Go ahead and connect it to Pinterest. Tell it what board to go to. I downloaded it from Canva, so I can go ahead and click here and find it in my downloads for my blog post. Do, 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 do. 
Um, and that will go ahead and be an image that, there we go, blog about Pinterest. So this was the image I created with the proper Pinterest dimensions within Canva. I'm going ahead and uploading it here as a graphic and I can send people to my blog. I can then scroll down and click to add a variation and I can create a second image within Canva that I can go ahead and download and add as a different image, but send people to the same place. So different image every time. Now, Pinterest also really loves video right now. So we are marketing partners with Pinterest and every time we speak to them, they're saying they really want more video content. And whenever a social network tells you that they want more video content or they want a specific type of content, you can bet that it is in their algorithm that that's the type of content that you are, um, that they are going ahead and prioritizing within the algorithm. So. I always suggest adding a couple of video pins within these variations for your blogs. Now they don't have to be complicated. You can add a video pin that is just as short as four seconds, or you can add one as long as 15 minutes. So if you wanna get a hop on your camera and talk a bunch, you could go ahead and do that. Otherwise, a really great hack for adding video pins without having to make it a super complicated system is going on into Canva. I'm not gonna test my luck again, but there's a sticker feature within Canva. And if you use the sticker feature in Canva and you add a sticker to a pin, it downloads as a video. You can then come into Meet Edgar and rather than attaching a normal, just static graphic, you could attach a video to this actual um, variation. So each and every variation could have an image or it could have a video attached and you could test different things. So as you're batching out all of the different posts for every single blog post or for every single link that you're gonna add to Meet Edgar, try to add at least five different variations. Make it easy on yourself as you're adding these in here. It will make it so that A, your pins can go out multiple times within the month, but B, it'll also make sure that you're again, testing different versions of each pin. So the variations also work in a last in first out order. So what this means again is when this whole post is up in your rotation of posts, Edgar sending the last variation that you add first to Pinterest, he'll then put the whole post to the end of the line the next time this whole post is up, based on when that category is on your schedule, he'll send the first variation. So it's a last in, first out rotation. All right, cool. So that's what I suggest doing there. There is a really awesome hack for, or not hack, a really awesome um, time saver for blog content if you use our extension as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and visit the Meet Edgar blog to show you this, but this could be on any article. This could be on any um, uh, blog post that you have. And our extension is available, I'll pop it into the chat. Um, our extension is available to download and it makes it so simple to use for adding content quickly. You'll notice I have this little Meet Edgar icon in my toolbar. When I click on the Meet Edgar icon, it's gonna pop up the add content to library section already, which is great, because now all I have to do is check off that I'd like to send this to Pinterest, go ahead and select my um, Pinterest board, so my blog post category here, go ahead and put it into a category, You'll notice again that you can just select these suggested images. So this is one of the fastest ways of getting content into Meet Edgar is to use this um, Meet Edgar extension. You see it already comes pre-populated with the title and URL here. I can just click to add a suggested media. Then my favorite here is if I scroll down, because a URL is in here, and you can do this when you're manually adding content in Edgar too, um, but you'll also notice if you're doing a URL in here, you can click suggest variations. And what Edgar actually does is he gets five different pull quotes, well, four different pull quotes out from that article. So you can see these variations already have text in the text box he is here. These are actually pull quotes that exist within this article. So Edgar is writing the description for you, which is fantastic because you don't have to spend the time doing that. You can just come in, have these suggested medias, have these auto variations and save them. And that's one of the fastest ways for getting your blog content into Edgar. If you don't have our extension yet, I would highly suggest downloading it from our help center. Um, I'll go ahead and put it in the chat, but when you're within your Meet Edgar account, you can get to our help center by clicking on your name in the upper right corner here, 
it'll produce a drop down menu. You can go to Help Center, just type in extension. Um, do, 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 and you can go ahead and download that. I suggest using it on Chrome. It is easiest there, but it does function as a bookmarklet on Safari and Firefox if those are um, your preferences anyway. Cool. Um, yeah, so the variations aren't going to go out back to back. Again, they work in a last in first out order as well. The variations are really great for Pinterest, especially if you're resharing things. Remember, Pinterest does not allow you to reshare content more than um, once onto the platform, or more than five times within a month onto the platform. There's a lot of different philosophies depending upon how often to share things, but there are some Pinterest experts out there who recommend pinning like up to 15 times a day, and that requires you to pin the same blog post to multiple boards a lot of the time. Um, so again, creating different graphics for it to allow you to pin that actual pin to multiple boards is a really good strategy just to get your content in different places where people might be searching for it. Remember, Pinterest is way more of a search engine than any other social media tool or social media platform out there. When you're on Pinterest, if you're wondering things like, hey, what do I name my boards and stuff like that, I suggest using the search bar. So when I come to Pinterest here, of course, there's a little search bar because it is such a visual search engine. You're going to go ahead and just start typing in some keywords within your industry. So for me, Edgar, as a social media automation tool, I can type in like social media. And the same way it works on Google, you'll notice that you get like the little um, search engine up here giving you suggestions for what to search. And these are all based upon some of the top searches that have been made on Pinterest. So I already know these, this language in this drop-down bar is the language that people are using when they're searching for social media. And these are the words that I want to use within my pins. Why? Because Pinterest is a search engine, it goes off of keywords. So you need to do your research and it doesn't have to be complicated. Keyword research sometimes can be a huge project and if you have the time to do it, certainly do it, get your SEO up. But if you are just a slow open or a small business and you want to improve the keywords that you're using to be found better, I suggest using the simplest strategy of coming onto the platform, typing in social media or whatever keywords are there and using the language that's already here to inform what language you should be putting into the description of your pins because you already know people are searching for this. So go ahead and do a little research there. Of course, on Pinterest, if you're just getting started and you're scrolling through Pinterest, you'll notice on their smart feed here, the majority of these pins do have like text overlays on them. You can see again, a video is in there. And this is a good way of saying, okay, you know, on my smart feed, Pinterest is showing me some of the most consumed content. And if this is some of the most consumed content, you want to start noticing the patterns of what each pin is showing you. And going through there, you can see it is pins with text and it is pins with videos most of the time. So you want to make sure you're incorporating things like adding text overlays to the pins you're adding to Edgar. So think about the ways that you can do that. I always really suggest too, thinking about getting inspiration on Pinterest from other companies. So uh, one of the questions that was pre-submitted for this batching party was just about getting started within a certain industry. And I was looking around and I believe it was like for fans or something. And I was looking around and I noticed um, that if you go to like, I was looking at Brita. Let me see if I can find it. I think I saved it. Here you go, Brita. You know the like filter system for water, clean water? I actually love their Pinterest account and get a lot of inspiration from this Pinterest account. Um, and I know it's not like the most sexy thing to market a actual like water filter. So if you are in that boat and you feel like you don't have a really inspirational thing to market, since Pinterest does have a mission to get people to be inspired on their platform, if you feel like your industry is not not super inspirational, check out Brita's Pinterest because a water filter, not super inspirational. But I think they do an amazing job creating content that makes me feel inspired for wanting to be better and use their product. So you can look at the fact that they put their person, their ideal customer of who they're marketing to in the center of every single pin in, um, regarding like the story they're telling. So water is good for you. They're not saying like Brita makes the best water. 
water. They're just saying, you know, this is going to help your life. They're re reminding people and reflecting to people the outcomes that they want. People want to be healthy. People want to make sure that they are using a water filter in order to have filtered water. But they also want to make sure that they're not using a bunch of plastic bottles. So they know what people identify with. With this identity marketing on Pinterest, people are going to be much more compelled to actually click this content. So what does your follower, what do your followers actually identify with? Make a list of what this identity they have actually is and see how you can incorporate that into your actual pins here. The other things I love that they do is they put tips regarding like the times of day it is, or excuse me, the times of year it is seasonally. You can see a lot of these are like back to school college must haves. What just happened? People went back to school. So again, think about what's going on in your followers' lives, what's going on um, in the broader kind of seasons and how your content can support that. They also give a ton of tips for people to take action on. So if you don't have a board for tips, definitely go ahead and make those because if you can get someone results with a tip you put out there, it's much more likely that they're going to trust and want to purchase from you in the future because you've already proven that you give them results. People want outcomes and results. So the promises that you're making should be backed up by these different ways of you getting them results even before they purchase from you. So for example, here at Me Edgar, we could do this with this concept of batching and we do it a lot on social media. You know, I go live a lot on social media and I talk about things like the concept of batching your content. Batching your content and doing it all at once really means that you only have to create social media content, let's say like 12 times a year if you're batching it on a monthly basis. You can do this without a social media automation tool like me, Edgar. You can do this on your own. In fact, that's how Edgar got started. And the fact that our founder, Laura, was doing this on her own using spreadsheets. And she was like, there's just got to be a better, easier way to batch my evergreen content. So she created this tool to make life easier for herself. Other people loved it. So started actually purchasing from it. And she pivoted from being in education to being a software owner. So we know this strategy works. You can do it without using a tool like Me Edgar, but using a tool like Me Edgar saves you a ton more time. But if we can get you results about doing something without our tool, it's much more likely you're gonna trust us when you see one of our promotional posts pop up and tell you, hey, purchase from Me Edgar and you can save even more time. You'll believe us because we've already saved you time. So what is that core thing that you're trying to do for people? What is that how-to content that you can teach people that they can take action on even before purchasing from you so you can start to build that trust. Make those as these tip pins that you can send out. Write a list of them and really get into your followers' heads about that type of content so that people feel really confident when they actually purchase from you. The other things that I love that Brita does is they actually put the pain point of what people are going to be experiencing um, before they actually purchase front and center. So they talk a lot about um, like sugary drinks. So obviously, if you can drink more water, you're going to drink less sugary drinks. And on their Pinterest, you'll notice when you like um, scroll down and you look through here, they talk a lot about like healthy habits, waste loss, weight loss um, by cutting like soda out. You know, what's the sugar lowdown? They tell you like four sugary drinks right here and it's like click here to find out more that's super curiosity producing stuff like this when you're like wait a minute how much sugar am i consuming by drinking other things besides water you'd like to know because we're curious people in our nature as being humans what is that for you what does your product solve again for me edgar we're big on time saving and efficiency so we could start putting statistics up there about time saving and efficiency so that your pain point is front and center we could say things about how much time you're losing on social media by every day having to log into your accounts and getting out there and posting um, by yourself without using an automation tool. You know, how much engagement you're losing out on without using a category-based system of posting where you're rotating through your posts. So this would be what we would do here at Meet Edgar. What is that for you? What statistics can you start putting out there? You know, Meet Edgar saves you um, eight hours a week on social media, stuff like that. And we do really fun things with it in the sense that we say, you know, for less than a latte a day, you can get eight hours um, back from your week 
uh, with social media by using a tool like this. So what can you compare it to that people can actually concretely understand like that? So less than a latte a day, I can understand what that means to me for that value exchange. Think about a tip board as being a board you're adding into Pinterest. I promise you, if you get people results and you go in to add that much value, you're going to see people trusting you more and people being super excited about getting out there with your um, and consuming your content more. Again, if you don't have a lot of boards on Pinterest at this time, one of the first boards that I suggest you get into Pinterest for and create is a best of board. So when people go to your account, they know the best content to start consuming from you and can get an idea about who you are right away. Cool. Um, so I do have a couple of slides that I'd like to just share and go over. We've got about 20 more minutes in the hour here. Um, I do see that Maura has been incredible about answering your questions as usual, um, which is great. She's going to um, she's gonna be a wealth of knowledge. So if you guys have more questions for Maura and I afterwards, I know a couple of you are probably going to be popping out here. Go ahead and email support at meegger.com and we can get those answered for you. I'm gonna go over some general Pinterest strategies on some slides here. Keep your questions coming. I'll stay on for a few minutes after the hour too to answer anything product related, strategy related you want. So keep the chat going there. Um, and I'll go over again, just some really great slides here. Do, 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 do. And these are not screen sharing, so we should be done with the technical difficulties here as well. Um, so for Pinterest, again, with any network, it's super important to keep their mission in mind so that the content you're putting out there really fits into the nature of the network. Pinterest's nature is that it wants to be a place that it's inspiring people. Their mission statement is at Pinterest, our mission is to help people discover things they love and those things that they want to do in real life. So it's a place that they want people to take action on their projects. You know, Thinking about how you've used Pinterest in the past, a lot of the time it's probably things like recipes, um, really cool DIY projects, stuff like that. That's because Pinterest wants to put that stuff front and center. So you wanna think about how your content can fit in with that. How do you help people discover and inspire those things? With that said, this can also help inform the times of day that you're sending that content out because Pinterest's most um, traffic time of days are actually in the evenings after 8 p.m. and on the weekends. When we think about this, this makes a ton of sense because when people want to do projects and when people actually want to get out there and be inspired, they are going to be at those times of day. So I suggest always getting in there and actually coming out and saying, okay, of course you wanna check your own Pinterest analytics to see when your specific audience is on there, but when you're putting your categories in Me Edgar's weekly repeating schedule, think about the fact that Pinterest is a little different in that people are there to do projects, so they're there in the evening, they're not on Pinterest to like escape a little bit or kill time like in the grocery store line. They're there to get specific ideas usually. So evenings and weekends is a great place to start if you don't have a lot of data about your specific audience. If you do have data already about your specific audience and you have a business Pinterest account, absolutely use that to inform your schedule. Side note, if your Pinterest account is not a business Pinterest account yet, please switch it on over. It has such a better way of giving you analytics to again, make sure you're not swinging your golf clubs in the dark and missing the fact that how you can improve upon the content you're putting out there. Um, we have a great blog post on how to switch to a business account. If you go to our blog, meetedgar.com slash blog, you can search for it there or email us after and I can definitely send it to you. But remember that mission when it comes to actually getting out there and putting your content in. You also want to remember that you need to show people how your product or service makes people's lives better. So it's not something that's just, hey, buy our pizza cutter, right? It's, hey, see how our pizza cutter can make your life better. You can't just tell people the features of your product or service. You have to think about why they're purchasing your product or service and how you can actually make sure people understand the outcome they're going to get in their life. Because when it comes down to marketing, the simplest form that you can explain marketing really is you telling people how your product or service helps them. And then they get to opt in to decide if their pain point around what your product or service helps with is big enough for them to want to fork over money and purchase from you, right? So you need to make sure you're telling people the whole story, not just, hey, this pizza cutter is sharp. You need to say, hey, this pizza cutter is gonna allow you to cut your pizza faster to get back to watching your sports game or something, right? 
totally off the top of my head, but you see what I'm saying. Take it a step further than just the features. And remember to tell people how you help them in the sense that you're telling people the outcome of the life they're going to have after using your product or service. Pinterest is a powerful, powerful search engine. So you wanna make sure all the content you're putting out there is done in a way you're using those keywords. So do your keywords research and make sure you have those keywords within your title and description to be found more. But also remember how to content does super well when it comes to search engines. So same thing on like Google and YouTube, which are also search engines. Look for what people are searching, use the keywords they're already using in your language, and you'll get much better results of being found in the feed. The algorithm on Pinterest, we've gone over this, likes when people actually go off of Pinterest and consume the content. So it is one of the best platforms for driving traffic. So make sure every single blog post you're putting out there really does get people from Pinterest to your site. You'll notice once you start pinning on Pinterest that you're playing the long game. You'll see pins that you pinned three months ago still drive traffic to your site, which is awesome. There is a side note here. If you are using Edgar, you can always go into your history tab and usually track clicks. The side note here is that Pinterest hates short links. So this isn't on our side. Unfortunately, this is a Pinterest thing. They don't like you to use bit.ly links. They don't like you to use our link shortener ed.gr. You don't have to worry about any of that. If you have it turned on globally within your Meet Edgar account, no worries. But you will notice when we send your pins to Pinterest, they're not going to use bit.ly. They're not going to use ed.gr. That's because Pinterest doesn't like that. So you need to go ahead and use those analytics on Pinterest to see this information. But you'll notice that the long game on Pinterest means that, again, people are searching for your content that you might have posted three months ago. This is the importance of creating evergreen content that always makes sense to people. And they'll go ahead and click off and consume that content. This time of year, I'm going to say something a little bit funny that you might think, why are you recommending seasonal content, Megan? It is only September. But think about what people are doing right now, especially. They are on there probably thinking about Christmas already. You know, busy moms who want to get this stuff out of the way, um, busy uh, business owners who want to make sure that they are setting themselves up for success during the holiday season by getting a social media automation tool so that they don't have to go out and actually post during Christmas time or New Year's time. They might be looking for Edgar and these solutions now. So again, you can make seasonal boards on Pinterest and set Edgar to send the seasonal content out now as well. So you always wanna be thinking a little bit about the evergreen content you're putting out there to be found months um, in the past to keep getting that traffic, but also set yourself up for success in Edgar by creating some seasonal categories to start sending out to Pinterest now. Because people are thinking about this stuff now and the more your content can be out there, some of the first to be found, the better. All right. So also what you name things on Pinterest really matters. So if you're creating boards, it shouldn't just be blogs, you know, it should be really specific. And again, this goes with like any marketing strategy. I'm sure you've heard these little cutesy ways of saying it before, but you want to niche it down to blow it up. So the more specific you can be, the more likely it is the people who are actually going to need your products or services are going to be able to see that board and say, yes, this is for me. So put the keywords that you're finding people using a lot on your boards so that they're found more. So I, if I was sending pins from me, Edgar, I'm not just going to call it blog board. I'm going to call it social media marketing blogs. These keywords matter to be found. These keywords also matter for identifying with that content. And if you can get your followers to identify with that content, they're going to be more likely to consume it. All right, so it also really helps your board show up in other search engines. This is a cool thing about marketing on social media is remember the content on social media can be found on things like um, Google searches. LinkedIn and Pinterest are two of the social networks that do this the most. So if you have content on LinkedIn and you have content on Pinterest and someone searched for stuff in um, Google, your content could show up from Pinterest on Google and it is a great brand awareness thing, right? So make sure you're really putting those keywords in there, not only to be found on Pinterest, but also when people like search on Google for that kind of information. Again, we've gone over this. You want to have your best of board so that people know the best content of where to start, what to consume. We all know social media is a place where there is content overload these days. So you want to make sure that you give people the best content to consume right away, right there. 
If you do have a new account, you want to aim to work up to posting 15 to 20 um, boards. But remember, these boards don't necessarily all have to be related to your product. There's something in marketing called the brand awareness postings that do really well about bringing people into your atmosphere or into your world who might not even know your product or service exists. At me, Edgar, we're a social media automation tool. Some people might not even know there are tools out there that can help with this. That's why we produce content around things like working remotely, around how to write a really good blog post, around things like these are, we're talking about doing something like a remote um, cookbook because Pinterest goes ahead and um, prioritizes recipes a lot because it is some of the most consumed content. So we want to go ahead and get our brand name out there to get a touch point of people. We are a remote team here at Meet Edgar. I'm in Denver, more is in DC. Our team is scattered between the US and Canada. And we all have different styles of what we cook from home and stuff like that. People could be searching for that, find it, they would then be brought into our world by a piece of content that they were searching for, you know, how to cook a lunch when you're working from home or something like that. And they might not have even known a social media tool exists. So get creative with a few of these boards that you're putting out there. Of course, stay focused on the content that's going to really help people understand what you do. But think about the ways that you can get a little bit more creative with these boards as well. When you're creating pins on Pinterest, this is something I forgot to mention as I was a little stressed about all of that Canva screen share dropping there. Um, but one of the things that Mora has seen work really well for our Pinterest strategy, actually, um, for our podcast content is we actually, so we have a podcast called Social Post. And what we do is we have our podcast episode. Mora goes ahead and has that podcast episode transcribed. We interview people on that podcast. She gets some poll quotes from within that transcription. So just some really good standalone one sentence quotes that our guests gave to us. And she actually goes ahead and makes those into pins. Those pins are some of the most traffic driving pins that we see because again, people love to be inspired on Pinterest. So do you have content out there, whether it's your own thought leadership content that you could go ahead and put as like a one sentence text overlay on a beautiful background and link it to a blog post? Stuff like that works really well and you can get creative with it, right? So we could have a board called like blog post quotes or podcast quotes. We could also have a board called podcasts. We could make an image for our podcast board that is just strictly like the headline, the title of the podcast and post our podcast link there. On our other board, our podcast quotes board, we would make that quote and we would go ahead and put the actual same link to lead people to the podcast to listen to it, but it's a different graphic, it's a different board, it's just having that piece of content show up in a couple different places with the different availability for people to look at it. So definitely think about the ways you could do that, right? So again, that same podcast link is gonna be the destination link of leading people to our podcast, but one of the graphics on just the normal podcast board is gonna be the headline, the title of the podcast, the other one on our podcast quotes board is going to be a quote of what one of the um, guests on our podcast said. They're both leading to the same link, but they're on two different boards. So when you hear people say things like if you're doing a lot of Pinterest research, when you hear people say things like they're pinning like 15 to 20 times a day, they're not coming up with brand new content. They're not pumping out 15 blog posts a day. They're doing things like that upcycling one piece of content to post it multiple times. So what you can, how can you do that with the content that you have? All right, so again, we went over this. Your boards make really great categories within Edgar. So use that to systemize and keep things in a way that you're not always just posting blog posts, but you're posting some of that brand awareness content to bring people in to hear what your company is all about. Um, you're also doing things like getting your know, like, and trust factor up by allowing people to see who you are. You know, you can do like a behind the scenes board and make sure that you're putting that content out there once in a while too, to remind people there's actually human behind the brand content they're seeing. All right, so again, what we suggest doing at Meet Edgar for any social media platform holds true for Pinterest, and that is making sure that 80% of the content you are putting out there is valuable content. 20% can be a little bit more promotional, so make sure when you're putting your categories onto your Meet Edgar schedule that you're not always just leading people to discounts on Pinterest, but you're leading people to helpful information. 
You really want to make sure when you have a ton of content that you have different boards for that content so that people can keep organized on Pinterest. Whenever someone is overwhelmed, they're not going to consume your content and they're not going to purchase from you. The clearer the person is on what you do, the simpler you make it for them to find your content, the more likely they're going to take action on it. We went over how to be a headline generating machine. I'm going to stress this again because it is one of the best ways that you can make sure the copy you're putting out there is actually compelling enough to drive people to your site. Copy is really just the one vehicle that you have to convince people that they really need to consume your content. So take your time with it. It's going to make a world of difference. If you're someone who's like, oh, social media doesn't work for me, start looking at your copy. Start thinking about the ways you can add identifying words in there that speaks directly to people and what they are um, struggling with the most. Always make sure you can find ways to add emotion in. Pinterest is no different than any other marketing in the fact that we as humans purchase on emotion more than we like to give ourselves credit for. We want to think we're so logical and we're only putting content out there or excuse me, we're only purchasing things because we logically need them. So not true. We purchase things all of the time on emotion. And the more you can connect with someone emotionally about the um, better lifestyle they can have with your product or service, the more likely it is they're going to be really excited about purchasing from you. You want to make sure you're cross pinning. We just talked about how to do that with the um, podcast episode there. You want to really make sure that you're using the strategies and the um, tips here to pay attention to what boards are doing the best. Anytime you say, I don't know what to post on social media, I'm always going to go ahead and encourage you to look at the content that's doing well, because that is advice right from your followers about what they want to consume more of. So look at those bright spots about the content that's doing really well and go ahead and create more of that. When you're creating your pins, remember here, we went over this, but a new URL and a new graphic is seen as a new pin. So you want to make sure that you're sharing perhaps the same blog post on multiple boards with a different graphic. An old URL and a new graphic is also seen as a new pin. So make sure that you go ahead and create your graphics really smartly. If you've never used the stickers before in Canva, I absolutely recommend you do that. You know, the stickers are something as simple as like an arrow that moves. If you go ahead and put that sticker, that's just an arrow that moves like pointing to your blog post and download it as a video and upload that as a video to one of your variations in Meet Edgar, that's seen as a video pen and you'll most likely get a little bit more priority in the smart feed on Pinterest. What to include in a blog pin? You always want to pique people's curiosity a little bit about what content they're going to consume once they actually get to that blog post. A great easy way of doing this is just, you know, copy and pasting some pull quotes from within that blog. Make it easy on yourself. This is another form of upcycling. You've already written that content. So go ahead and reuse some of the strongest language within that blog post in the description of your pin so you don't have to double up on the copy you're creating. You always want to do an image. I'm going to really push you to get creative with the text overlays you're doing because if people are just scrolling through Pinterest, they don't see the description of your pin. They just see the graphic on their home feed. So you need to give them a little bit more if the graphic doesn't make it obvious about what the pin is about. Text overlays are your best friend. And then, of course, a destination link. You always want to start to make sure your brand colors are showing up in every single pin you're getting out there because if people consume your content and love it and they notice your brand colors on a different pin, it's more likely they'll click it in the future because their brain recognizes things visually way faster than we recognize things by reading it. So visual colors, make sure you have a brand guideline. Um, you know, Canva makes it really easy to do this because they'll save your branded colors in there. Or just make sure every time you're creating a graphic, you use your branded colors so you're recognizable on the platform. Um, cool. You also need to make sure you're backing multiple versions of your pin graphic. We've been over that. Just make it a checklist item when you're doing your batching. So let's say, you know, every first Monday you're coming in to batch out different content. Make sure you have a checklist item that you're just making five different graphics for every blog post you're putting out there. Within Canva, they make it super simple to do. Go ahead and do that, download them, and upload them all to Edgar. Um, cool. Pro tip, when you're saving your graphics, you always want to make sure the keyword is in the title. That's because this keyword is actually seen. So like when you're downloading the graphic and you're saving it to your computer, sometimes when you download things, you know, it's like um, it's like a million numbers and letters, right? You want to resave that and call it like 
social media blog content or whatever, um, we would call it that, you would call it whatever makes sense for you, because Pinterest actually uses what that file is named as another alternative way of categorizing it within Pinterest. So for us, if we downloaded a piece of content and it wasn't named something that has to do with social media or blogging content or remote work, we're gonna wanna go in and rename that file before we upload it. So the file name can also have the keyword in it. Um, Pinterest really optimizes for video. Remember, a video can be as short as four seconds or as long as 15 minutes. Video is a great way to upcycle your content for other social media networks as well. Make sure within the video content you're getting out there, you can do something as simple as getting your iPhone out, talking for two minutes about what the main points of a blog post you wrote are. That's a great way that you don't have to re-research content, but you get the video content out there. Um, really, again, making sure you're using those moving stickers. I just love this tip so, so much there. Um, you can also always know like with video content, it's a great way to repurpose it to your Instagram stories because the Pinterest and the Instagram stories kind of verticalness of it, um, that template works really well. So at me, Edgar, remember, we always want you to work smarter, not harder. So making sure that you're repurposing a Pinterest video onto things like Instagram stories, since the sizing is already in that vertical size that works well, is a really great way you can get more mileage out of one piece of content that you're creating. Video is really smart because the smart feed within Pinterest is looking to diversify video as well as static graphics. So the more videos that they can get, the more they can add those into the smart feed people are seeing and they're not getting a lot of video content right now. So you can go ahead and take advantage of this. Um, always make sure that the titles you're putting out there are really shedding light on your customers' lives and not yours. You always wanna make your customer the hero of the story and make sure they see themselves in your content. You want to get your behind the scenes content out there to humanize your brand. So make sure you're doing things like showing your team off. If you have like people go out and write like a guest blog post from you, you could do like a guest blog post board and have human faces out there introducing who's writing that content. So people feel more connected to a human rather than just a computer screen, which gets that emotional bond a little bit more and builds your trust so much further. So you could show your employees, show your blog contributors, anything you can do to make it human, have a board for that. It's a really great way to do things. So you could do this by having a picture of their face, a little fun bio, and a little bit of like a quote about what they do at your company, stuff like that. So you see what I'm saying here. This has been a lot of fun. I know a lot of people are dropping off now because we are just at the hour here. I would love to hear if you guys have any other questions that you'd like for me to answer before we leave here. Um, this week is a really, really fun one. Uh, yes, I will show you the stickers in a minute. Fingers crossed the screen won't cut out, um, but great question. Um, this week is a fun week, too, because we also have our normal um, batching party on Wednesday this week. The invite for it will go out tomorrow. So if you wanted to come back and get other ideas on content for your other networks, feel free to do that. Um, yeah, not a problem, Denise. I'll go ahead and in the replay email, send out the PowerPoint slides as well for you. Um, but if you do have other questions after this, go ahead and email support at meetedgar.com and I'd love to get those answered for you. I'll go ahead and show Canva right now with the stickers. Um, again, I do super apologize if this crashes out again. Do, 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 do. All right, here we go. So share screen. All right, perfect. So when you're in Canva here and you go to the photos, and you, let's say arrow sticker. So these, sometimes you have to scroll like all the way to the bottom. I'll just do sticker and not arrow. But they're like the little moving things within Canva that you can find. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, goodness. So if you scroll, scroll, scroll. Where are these? Maybe they're under elements, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, yeah. Here's.
don't know what it is about Canva and Pinterest. But yes, thank you so, so much, Denise, or excuse me, um, Melly. It is Elements, not Photos. My mistake there. So if you go to Elements within Canva, I'll go ahead and share this real quick again. So if you go to Elements right over here on the left, you see these little um, movements here. So if I went ahead and like did this little um, arrow that's moving, you can see right up here that it's now a video. So you can see this little play button. So again, when I went ahead and created a Pinterest size graphic here, I could then go ahead and add my text and I can go ahead and say like blog title, visit my blog, whatever, make a beautiful background, you know, find a background within um, Canva here, let's say I wanted to use um, this really nice background, blog title, make it a little bigger, do a little description about what you're going to get and maybe like use this arrow to like point to the blog. So like visit this blog or whatever. When I download it, when I click this little download button, it's going to download as a video. So I click to download and you can see it's going to be an MP4 video. It's six seconds long, so it fits Thank you so much for your patience here. Um, cool. So I really appreciate you guys coming. It was a super fun hour hanging out with you guys. Um, like I said, we have our normal batching party on Wednesday this week. We also run daily office hours. If you have more like specific questions, those are completely unstructured. If you go to our help center and visit office hours, you can see where to sign up. Email support at meagra.com. If you do have any feedback or questions about this, I would love to answer those. I'll be in the inbox all afternoon. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, I really appreciate you guys uh, coming today, chatting with Maura and I, and being patient as my screen share a cut out there a couple of times. Uh, thanks for joining. I hope to see you guys again in the future, either for another content batching party or in the inbox sometime. Uh, have a great, great rest of your day, and we will make sure that we put more Pinterest um, tips out on our blog throughout the month as well. So go ahead and check that out, meetegger.com slash blog, if you need more tips on things like how to change your Pinterest account to like a business account and stuff like that. Thanks again for coming today, guys. I'll send out the replay um, and let me know if you guys do have any other questions in the future.